The Wall Street Journal reporting that SoftBank is reportedly in talks to invest up to $25 billion in OpenAI. The deal would make SoftBank OpenAI the biggest investor, replacing Microsoft, which has committed nearly $14 billion to date. This coming after China's AI startup DeepSeek sparked a massive sell-off in tech stocks earlier this week, prompting both public and private companies to respond. That includes OpenAI's CEO Sam Altman, who announced the company will now offer non-paying users quote hundreds of free queries a week. That offering is something that D.A. Davidson estimates could potentially cost the company more than half a billion dollars per week. For more on what it means for the overall AI landscape, we want to bring in Alex Platt. He is from D.A. Davidson. Alex, it's great to have you. And, and your note caught my attention for a number of reasons. One, obviously, the overall impact that we're seeing to the AI landscape, but ultimately what this means, I think, for the games of winners and losers within this space. You've identified some of those losers that maybe often fly under investors investors rating. So who stands to potentially benefit from this shift? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. Um, I, I think if we look at the impact of what DeepSeek has done, uh, you know, we've been telling clients, you know, this is, uh, we could relate this to Roger Bannister and what he did for track and field by breaking the, the four minute mile. Um, you know, prior to Roger Bannister doing that, it was uh, thought as impossible to, to, to go under four minutes. He, he breaks it, and, and right afterwards, you see a bunch of runners be able to run now sub four minutes. DeepSeek did something very similar uh, to the market. Um, the, the market's, you know, the prevailing narrative in the market um, up until about a week ago was that in order to compete at, at the frontier model game, you needed to be an open AI, an anthropic, a, a DeepSeek, a, a meta X AI. You needed to have tens of billions of dollars of, of excess capital in order to, to build uh, a model that powerful with that level of intelligence. Uh, DeepSeek showed us, you know, you don't need that much money. They, they could do it with five and a half million dollars for training. They could deliver at a much lower cost. And, and the best part is they really gave the rest of, of the space their playbook, how to replicate what they've done, how, how to make a model that is that computationally uh, efficient. And, and what this really does is, you know, it'll increase competition in the space. This means that, you know, OpenAI and DeepSea, I mean, sorry, OpenAI and, and DeepMind, they're going to continue going down their path of using billions of dollars and continuing to scale uh, their pre-training compute and, and inference uh, test time compute. Um, but, but on the flip side of that, now we have it so you, know, you can spend a lot less and get the same level of performance. Um, and that just increases competition, which is great for consumers, it's great for businesses, uh, and it's great for academic researchers as well. Well, and Alex, I think that also the biggest takeaway is that DeepSeek isn't alone, right? When you take a look inside China, some of the other models that are under development right now, we also got the news out from Alibaba this week, too. Exactly. We're, we're, we're seeing a lot of research being done um, in, in the frontier model space, especially out of China. And, and I think this kind of goes to a point, um, and, and we're seeing this uh, from a lot of maybe, you know, CEOs who, who are commenting uh, in the U.S. about what DeepSeek is doing, um, may, may, maybe we could argue that there, there's a lot of groveling occurring about maybe the, the methodology as to how DeepSeek has done this. Uh, but, but in the meantime, while, while we're talking about the politics and, and, you know, talking about whether their compute cluster was, whether, whether they were honest about that in their paper, these Chinese labs like, like DeepSeek, like Quen, uh, like ByteDance, like Minimax, they're going out and, and they're innovating. Uh, DeepSeek, in the meantime, since last week, has put out a leading uh, vision language model that, that beats uh, OpenAI's Dolly and Stable Diffusion. So these Chinese frontier uh, research labs, they're not resting. And I guess you know the only answer for, for American labs, in our view, is they just have to out-innovate them. Yeah, it seems like the methodology is certainly coming into question as to how they ethically were able to develop it so quickly and then ultimately what type of code they were perhaps able to leverage from some of the other competitive partners that are out there or com competitors that are out there. I, I guess the question though becomes who is best positioned to monetize this at scale? Yeah, I, I, think, I think when we look at this, I, I still think that on the, on the business side, it's still these, these frontier labs like OpenAI, like DeepMind, like Anthropic that are still maybe best positioned to, to monetize this sort of thing. Again, we're not trying to say that DeepSeek is, has gone out and has won the frontier model game. They're, they're helping push and advance the space forward. We think that these large labs will uh, respond in a big way. Um, you know, O3 Mini should be coming out soon and we think that will be a, a big development. Um, but, but as it goes for, for the, maybe the consumer business, uh, for, for these chatbots, I, I still think that some of the top players 
like uh, like OpenAI, like like Anthropic, are still very well positioned to, to capitalize on this. Now, listen, another thing you pointed out in your note, the, the AI arms race here between China and the United States is just getting underway. So with that in mind, what does that then look like, do you think, over the next four years under the Trump administration? Yeah, I, I think I think um, it's it's going to be competitive, right? We we saw Dario from Anthropic yesterday. Uh, he he talked about wanting to, to increase foreign export uh, controls on some of these Nvidia GPUs. Now it, it's our belief that that this probably won't help. They they didn't work beforehand. Uh, DeepSeek and other labs were able to find ways around them, whether it's through their algorithmic approaches um, or, or, or or other techniques. Um, but but what this means is that for the for the Trump administration, if, if I were maybe AI crypto czar David Sachs, instead of groveling and talking about how they they, they distilled you know some of some of the open AI models or, or they took data or, or they took GPUs they weren't allowed to, I, I would sort of go back to what it seemed like the Trump administration was running on beforehand in his campaign, which was America needs to return to to innovation, being pro innovation, and I think that's what. That's what that means for the United States. And I think over the next four years, we're going to see a lot of back and forth between some of these Chinese labs and, and, and our frontier U.S. labs. Alex Platt of DA Davidson. Alex, thanks for taking the time. Thanks.